As the board president is not in attendance at the meeting, as the vice president, I will be assuming the duties of the president at this meeting. The regular notice requirement of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act has been complied with and that adequate advance notice of this meeting was given at least 48 hours in advance. On January 9th, 2024, notice was mailed to the Courier Post, Philadelphia Inquirer, and posted on the district's website. At this time, can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? At this time, I'd like to turn it over to our board secretary for roll call. Jeanette Alvarez. Jeanette Alvarez. Present. Name, Naomi uh, Gillespie. Name of Gillespie. Present. Cameron Hudson. Present. Danielle Jackson. Present. Karen Merricks. Wasim Muhammad. Namdi Nelson. Uh, Fire president have a quorum begin the meeting. At this time, I would like to invite up Senator Cruz Perez to the podium to administer the oath. Good evening, everyone. Muy buenas noches a todos. Uh, Wanda Garcia, could you please come forward? Leave it there so you can see her. Okay, Wanda. And repeat after me. I, Esther, your name. I, Wanda Garcia. Affirm, affirm that I will support the Constitution, that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. Of the State of New Jersey. Of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear. That I will bear. Through faith. True faith and allegiance, and allegiance to the same, to the same and, to the government, and to the government established, established in, the United States, in the United States and in this state, and in this state under the, authority, under of the, the authority of the people. I, Esther, your name, Wanda Garcia, affirm, affirm that I'm not disqualified, that I'm not disqualified as, a voter, as a voter first warrant RS, to RS 19, 19-4-1. Nor disqualified, nor disqualified due to conviction, due to conviction of, a crime, of a crime of any offense, of any offense listed, listed in the New Jersey statute, in the New Jersey statute 18A, 18A column, column 12-1. 12 12 1. I, I, your name, I, Wanda Garcia, I possess the qualifications, I possess the qualifications prescribed, by the law, prescribed by the law for the office of member. For the office of member of the, Board of, Education, of the Board of Education, and that I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully justly, justly, and impartially, and impartially perform, all the duties, perform all the duties according, to the, best of according my ability, to the best of my ability. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Can Maria Perez please come forward? Okay. 
I repeat after me. I state your name. I, Maria Perez, affirm, affirm that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States and the Constitution and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. Of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith and allegiance and allegiance to the same. To the same and to the government, and to the government established, established in the United States. In the United States. And on this, this state. And on under this state, and under this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people. I, Esther, your name. I, Maria Perez, affirm, affirm that I'm not disqualified. That I'm not disqualified as a voter. As a voter. Pursuant. Per, pursuant, pursuant. To R. To R. S. Nineteen. Nineteen. Four one. Column four one. Nor disqualified. Nor disqualified. To conviction. Due to conviction of a crime, of, a crime of, any offense, of any offense, listed in the New Jersey list, statute, listed in the New Jersey statute, 18A, 18A column, column 12, 12 one. I state your name. I, Maria Perez, affirm, affirm that I possess the qualifications. That I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. Prescribed by law for the office of member, for the office of, member of, the board of, education, of the Board of Education and that I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully impartially, impartially and justly, and justly perform, all the duties, perform all the duties according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. At this time, is there any board members that has any comments for our new board members? Board member Alvarez. Thank you, I'm VP Nelson. Um, I actually would like to congratulate um, uh, Marie and as well as Wanda. Welcome to the team, because we are a team here, along with the superintendent, um, and welcome aboard. Board member Hudson? Yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna speak on this side. We got the cool side now. But <laughs> I love y'all though, but uh, yeah, congratulations. Uh, you know, just as still my first term, it's just been a great experience and you know, you'll have, have, have a lot of fun with this. Um, a lot of work to do, but you know, you're gonna enjoy it. So Thank welcome. You. Board member Jackson? Thank you. I just want to say welcome to you ladies. Um, we're excited to have you join the team. We're excited for the work that we've been doing. Excited to see how you guys um, and what you guys can bring to the table and the exciting things that you all have in mind concerning the board, our students, and our community as well. So thank you. So just echoing everything that was already said, we welcome you to the team. We look forward to doing the work and we're glad to have you. So thank you. At this time, I Turn it over to our board secretary. Good evening again. Uh, the board will now go into closed session to discuss the matters of the following nature, uh, individual privacy, student HIV results, and personnel to, to discuss confidential personnel matters. Uh, go motion to go into closed session. Motion by uh, Mr. Hudson. Second by Ms. Jackson. All in favor? Okay, closed session start time is 5.43 uh, p.m. Uh, expected to return to 15 minutes. Okay, so going to closed session. Mr. Hudson. Second. Second by uh, Ms. Alvarez, is that? Yep, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and time is uh, 6 11 p.m.
Okay, uh, is there any, I believe there's a committee report for the policy committee, Mr. Hudson? Good evening, everyone. Uh, Cameron Hudson reporting from the policy committee, uh, spokesperson. Oh, God. Whoa. <laughs> Can we turn that on? All right. Um, policy committee is acting co-chair, me and board member Jackson. Uh, we had meetings on March 18th, come on now, March 18th and April 15th, and it was attended by, uh, the last meeting was attended by myself, Teresa Reese, Sam Price, uh, Kim Buell Alvis, and we went over, we had three policy updates for first reading. The first one is policy, updating policy 5141. Point eight, sports related concussion and head injury. This revision is needed in response to a statutory update to clarify the term student athlete so that reference includes cheerleader, modified language to include interscholastic head injury training program requirements. In lieu of athletic head injury program, modify parental notification requirement to ensure notification occurs annually among other changes. The second update for first reading is policy, is updating policy 4111.1 slash 4211.1 and 2224, non-discrimination and or affirmative action to include a reference to the New Jersey law against discrimination as well as include language regarding how to file a complaint directly with the Division of Civil Rights. And lastly is updating policy 4117.50 and 4217.50. Standards for staff discipline adding a statement that disruptive behavior includes disciplining a staff member or providing a negative assessment of a staff member's performance in the presence of other staff or students. That will conclude my report. Any, well, any questions from board members? No? Okay, that concludes my report. Thank you. No other committee. Matt Dismont. Uh, now I'll turn the uh, meeting over to the superintendent for a report. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask the board um, and everyone on the, uh, the dais to transition down to the first couple of rows. Thank you so much. And we'll go right into our uh, report for this evening. So while the screen is coming down, we'd like to thank everyone for being here um, tonight for our April regular advisory board meeting. And before we move into um, the rest of the presentation, I do want to take this opportunity um, to pause. We can go to the next slide. As we provide a moment of silence for two bright lights uh, that were taken away far too early. Um, one, a student who graduated from Eastside High School last year, uh, just Jahar, Jazara Brielle Sanchez was actually a student rep who served on our um, 
our uh, student advise our advisory board as a student board rep who attended Soar Academy, and also very, very recently at Eastside High School, Mr. Jeremy Pond, um, a health and PE teacher who was beloved by students and staff members alike. So we want to take this opportunity um, to pause for a moment of silence. Thank you. For our agenda, uh, you'll see we don't have very many topics, but we have a lot of uh, positive information that we want to share with you, as well as updates that are important for the board to receive and also for the public. Um, but before we get into the rest of that agenda, we have rewards and recognition. And so we'd like to have at this time our partner, uh, Wholesome Riches, to come forward. I believe Michelle Pila is here or representative from Wholesome Riches. It's coming forward. Oh, Ms. Chikwekwe, you're going to do the honors for us? Yes, okay, Principal Chikwekwe um, from uh, Brim Medical Arts High School is going to um, fill in for Michelle and share just some of the rewards. We, found, we are hearing so many positive things from our students who are participating, giving back, knowing the importance of service, and we're going to acknowledge them at this time. There you go. Thank you, Superintendent. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Wholesome Riches, I would like to announce that for the third marking period, over 200 students volunteered for the food distribution. <laughs> Thank you, students. Thank you, everyone. So at this time, we'll call. If we have students from Dudley Family School, please, you may proceed this way for pictures. Any rep, student, staff from Dudley School? Thank you. Next, we have Cooper's Point Family School. <laughs> Are there students, staff members, parents from Cooper's Point? You may come down for pictures. Thank you. Next, we have H.B. Wilson Family School. Thank you. Students, teachers, administrator, I see Ms. Davis, Ms. Manino, Dr. Breedlove, thank you. Okay. Pictures, please. Yes. Congratulations, H.B. Wilson. Next, we have Cato Family School. Are there students, teachers, admin, parents representing Cato School? You may come down at this time for pictures. Congratulations, anyway. Move. Yes. So moving on to vets, are there students, teachers, other staff members, admin from vets? Please come down for pictures. Thank you for your service. Thank you, vets.
Congratulations and thank you. Next, we have Creative Arts High School. Are there students, teachers, staff members, admin, or any representative from Creative Arts High School? Congratulations and thank you. Last but not the least, Brain Medical Arts High School. Are there st students, staff, parents, any representative from Brain? I see Ms. Soda coming down. Thank you, Mr. Quaker will be joining you. Thank you. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, lead educator Ford. Next, um, in our awards and recognition uh, portion of the uh, board meeting tonight, we're going to share a special congratulations. Um, so uh, congratulations are definitely in order. Um, can we have one representative from Creative Arts High School? They are receiving the trophy for this month for having the highest attendance rate for the month of March. So let's give Creative Arts a round of applause. So the trophy will be going to Creative Arts, okay? Yes, indeed, and so it will be moved from the building where it is now to Creative Arts. Thank you so much. And again, pass on the word to the students and the staff that we appreciate them for making sure that our students are engaged and coming to school every day. So that is excellent. So we wanna to continue to move forward with our updates. And the next slide, um, just as a reminder for our families that the main round result results for enrollment were released on March 19th via your One Camden portal. Beyond the main round announcements, however, students can continue to register to attend Camden City Schools, and we welcome and look forward to families joining or returning to the Camden City School District. So again, um, we want you to know that the main round results are in. However, if you have decided or have not made up your mind or want to change your mind or want to join the district, you can always go to your neighborhood school and register in person. The bulk of our presentation tonight will be regarding um, some very exciting updates with regard to the Eastside High School um, construction. As you are all very much aware, we are very grateful for all of the work that was done collaboratively on many levels, starting with Congressman Norcross, Senator Cruz, who was here today swearing in board candidates, our mayor, our uh, assembly, assemblymen from the 5th Legislative District, as well as council our advisory board, everyone advocating for a new building, a new Eastside High School, and we are moving forward with the next phase. And we want to make sure we come back and keep everyone updated on what is happening. So if you go to the next slide, there are just a few key areas that I want to share some information with you, uh, and they are listed on the, the slide for you. Planning and design process for the rebuild, 
swing space, which is the announcement we want to share tonight, and our transitional phase. So where will our students and staff from east side be located um, while the building is being built? And then a conclusion and timeline. So on the next slide, what you will see is just a snapshot of something we've shared previously, but want to share it with everyone again to anchor you in what we are so excited about. So again, we're excited to announce that the new Eastside High will offer expanded opportunities for career and technical education focused curriculum with the inclusion of several cutting edge career and technical education spaces. Our vision is to provide students with practical skills and hands-on experiences that prepare them for success in the workplace. To support this initiative, the new school will be equipped with state-of-the-art facilities and resources that are tailored to CTE programs. This includes, and you can see them listed here, specialized classrooms, workshops, and labs dedicated to fields such as technology, engineering, healthcare, and more. Our students will have the opportunity to engage in real world projects and gain valuable experience in their chosen career paths. Additionally, the district has already begun forging partnerships with local businesses, industries, and community organizations to enhance current CTE offerings in preparation for the new Eastside High School. Through internships, apprenticeships, and mentorship programs, our students will have more opportunities to apply their skills in professional settings and build networks within their chosen fields. The next slide just gives you an overview of the construction project timeline. And so on this slide, what you'll see are some of the milestones connected to the timeline. And all of this information will be available on our website. We also have a new um, feature on our website uh, section where you can just click on Eastside High construction updates and you'll be able to get this information as well. Um, and so the milestones that you see here, I wanna just call out a few. So programming and concept design, that's the phase we are in now and that's started in February and it will last until June. And then we'll move into the programming and concept design and hopefully complete that phase by August 2024. Bridging and de design phase begins in the fall of 2024, and then we'll have opportunity for district and community feedback on the design concepts, and that will happen in the winter and spring of 2025. The designs will be submitted once we have community input and have uh, fully vetted it with stakeholders. March 2025 will be when those designs will be submitted. And the bridging design will be complete in September 2025. And the construction will begin in December 2026. The substantial completion of the new Eastside High will be slated for February 2029, and we hope to have occupancy as a district in the spring or summer of 2029. And we hope that the Eastside High School will be open to students in the fall of 2029. Now, this timeline is a timeline that we as a district don't control. Uh, we work with the school's development authority, and so it is our hope that this timeline can be accelerated, but we are looking at a three to five year window, and um, depending on you know what happens during construction and how everything moves along, we could be um, seeing the new building come forward before the September 29th date, but want to just give the max. And so we want you to take a look again. Remember, there, there are going to be ample opportunities for community input, and that is what is so very critically important. So be on the lookout uh, for opportunities that you can participate. And speaking of participation on the next slide, we list as a part of the planning process, we have convened East Hyde High School steering committees, and there are six sub committees. These committees will initially be responsible for completing the required space planning questionnaires for the school's development authority and the architects to allow them to create the initial 
programming designs. And you can see them listed right in front of you. Um, there are six subcommittees ranging from the instruction and programming committee all the way through to athletics and historical artifacts. Every single phase of this project is so critically important and that's why it's going to take um, a team effort to really make sure that this new high school is what the community, the students, um, and the residents want it to be. Next slide. And so this just gives you a little bit more information about one of the phases that I just talked about, the programming and concept design phase. So the district submitted an organizational overview questionnaire to the school's development authority at the end of February. This document outlines the district's overall vision for the new Eastside High Campus. Additionally, the district is responsible for submitting dedicated space space questionnaires for every space in the building, from classrooms to the auditorium, to restrooms, to the principal's office. Each subcommittee is responsible for completing assigned dedicated space questionnaires, which are submitted to the Camden County Improvement Authority, the school's development authority, and DIG architects. The district meets with this team every three weeks to present the dedicated space questionnaires and answer any questions about the submission. So it's a very, very collaborative process. And so on the next slide, you'll see the Camden County Improvement Authority, who I mentioned before, is managing the demolition of the current East Side High building. And demolition is set for the fall of 2024. And because demolition is set for the upcoming school year, we must find a swing space location. And we have uh, found and identified what that location will be. And we want to share it this evening um, at this board meeting. So the new Eastside High swing space will be Kramer School. And starting in September 2024, Eastside High School staff and students will be relocated to the Kramer School. And we know that that is located at 2800 Mickle Street right here in Camden. And it is one, is one of our district properties that um, unfortunately we had to close a few years back, but it is in our possession. And so this decision was made with careful consideration and in close collaboration with the Camden County the Improvement Authority and the school's development authority to ensure that Kramer School is equipped and ready to serve as a welcoming and supportive environment for our staff and students during this transition period. On the next slide, you'll see where the location of Kramer is for those who may not know where it is located. Um, when deciding on the location of the new Eastside High School swing space, we prioritize considerations of transportation and distance. If you take a look at the slide, you will see the distance between Eastside High and Kramer School. It's not very far away at all, so students won't have to be dis from um, the neighborhood where their school currently um, exists for the next three to five years, and that will reduce any concerns when it comes to uh, transportation costs as well. And on the next slide, uh, you'll see some of the anticipated renovations at Kramer. So because Kramer was a school, is a school that was closed before and has been sitting for a few years, there is work underway now in order to make sure that it is ready. And we are looking forward to working collaboratively with the school's development authority who will reimburse the district for the monies that we put out in order to make sure that Kramer is ready and suitable to receive our students. So here you see a list, and I won't read them for you, of exterior renovations and interior renovations that we are anticipating uh, having done uh, for the Kramer building. And so it is, again, important. This slide just underscores the work, the finances, the funds, the resources that are being put into Kramer, even now, in order to make it that wonderful space that it will uh, need to be for our students. And we're so grateful to have the collaboration of the principal at Eastside High School, uh, Ms. Gloria uh, Vega, as well as um, our central office team and many, many others that I've identified 
identified previously who are making sure that this building will be suitable for our students. And on the next slide, you'll just see a couple of images, um, just a few of the images of what Kramer is shaping up to look like. Walls have been painted, so it's much brighter. Um, there has been work done changing light fixtures. Um, there's much work to be done. That's why we left an image that actually has the scaffolding up. So you can see it's an active, active process to get the building ready. And our facilities team has been doing an amazing job of going in. They are dedicated and they are committed to making sure uh, that Kramer School is ready. And so again, we are very excited uh, for the temporary, because it's just a temporary home, but we're we know it's important for our students who will be residing in that temporary space and our staff members that we make sure that we do everything possible to have it be a, a uh, positive experience and a positive learning environment. And so the next slide shows you just some additional photos of the exterior of the building. Uh, the parking lot space on the south side of the building um, has been identified and we are going to also be adding some modular uh, or annex spaces, um, bringing them on so that we can have a suitable cafeteria space as well as adding on additional classrooms. So we will have annex spaces that will be delivered and um, set up uh, in the parking lot of the building. So the parking spaces will be um, around the perimeter of the building. So Kramer used to be a school before, um, and there was ample parking, and we are going to be working very closely and collaboratively with the city in order to make sure that there are no concerns. We will have town halls so that the residents in the neighborhood um, will be able to know in advance um, that the school is coming to that neighborhood and will be reopened, uh, and that parking is available for staff members there. So we are looking forward to um, partnering to ensure the success of every aspect of this project. And the next slide, take a look there. I just want to make sure I'm looking at the same. Space planning for Kramer School. Um, this slide just gives you a little bit of the information on, you know, how are we moving from Eastside High into Kramer? Where are the classroom spaces go going to be? As I said before, there's been lots of collaboration, lots of teamwork that's gone into making sure uh, we are putting classrooms in a position and spacing that will uh, make sense. And so if you take a look at this slide, you'll see the space planning for Kramer School. We've worked closely with Principal Vega and the Eastside High administrative team to assign rooms throughout Kramer. We've conducted several walkthroughs already to ensure we didn't miss anything, and here is what we have come up with. The ground floor at Kramer will house the music, band, health and PE office, temporary kitchen, Spanish, and world language classes. The first floor will house CTE, and special areas, including cosmetology and business, entre business entrepreneurship, ed pathways, graphic design, and CAD. The second floor will house ELA, social studies, JROTC, bilingual classes for math and science, and the third floor will house predominantly all of our math and science classes. As I spoke before, additionally, we will be adding an annex with four classrooms on the sides of the building to be installed in the 24-25 school year, as well as a cafeteria and kitchen annex also to be installed in the 24-25 school year. You will get a closer look at the space in uh, coming slides. SOAR Academy, which currently um, exists on the Eastside High campus now, will be moved to another location pending determination. There was just not enough space in the building to accommodate, accommodate the program, so we are working very closely with uh, Ms. Butler, who does an excellent job of leading SOAR, as well as our um, teams that focus on alternative education and uh, Principal Vega in making those determinations. The self-contained uh, special ed students, and there are six that have been identified, six students, not six classrooms, but six students may be moved to the Camden High campus depending on programming availability. 
And so the next slide, I know there may be questions about what's, what's going to happen to athletics, to our, our sports group program, because we have a very rich sports program at each side at Eastside High School. So athletic spaces behind the building will continue to be used throughout demo and new construction. Plans are being put in place to ensure continuity of services and accessibility for athletic teams during construction. Uh, so there will be no disruption to the athletic programming. We've been working with, our team has worked with uh, A.D. Phillips as well as um, Coach Brown and others at the campus, as well as Brian Gregg, who leads up the uh, athletic committee, and so many others. Just I would, uh, we're all working together, but there has been uh, time spent thinking about what's going to happen, and there being there, those plans are being refined to ensure that there is no disruption to our athletic programs. The next slide. Something that's very important, um, there are so many rich memories in, uh, connected to Eastside High School. And so there has been time taken through the Historical uh, Artifacts Committee to make sure that those items that are valuable, that are precious, um, those items from uh, years and years ago, trophies, plaques, all kinds of historical pieces and components um, will be able to be salvaged and that we can utilize them to uh, create a beautiful space in the new East Side building that gives homage to some of that history. And so the East Side High community members and staff, they have been involved with identifying items to be salvaged from the current building. Some of those salvaged items will be incorporated into the design of the new building. The district is planning to work with the Camden County Historical Society to curate displays for the new building that will provide an overview of the history of Eastside High School. So we want to capture and celebrate and make sure we keep alive the very rich legacy of Eastside High School. And this slide just shares you know, why Kramer, why now? When we made the difficult decision to close Kramer in 2020, we were navigating a very different financial landscape as a district. With the building operating at less than 65% capacity, and like Eastside High, being over a century old, it seemed the most prudent decision at the time. However, the financial position of our district has improved since then, prompting us to reconsider how to best utilize our resources and infrastructure. And so in this context, the choice of Kramer as a swing space for Eastside High is both strategic and forward thinking. Rather than investing in the temporary leasing of an external facility, a solution that offers no long-term benefits to our district, we have chosen to allocate those funds towards renovating a property that we already own. This approach not only provides a temporary home for Eastside High that minimizes disruption for our students and staff, but also revitalizes a building that holds potential for significant future contributions to our community. So our vision extends beyond the immediate needs of the Eastside High construction process. We see this as an opportunity to create a versatile space that can serve various community needs in the future after Eastside High is re rebuilt, such as possibly a senior care facility or a health clinic. If you take a look at this slide, this concept mirrors the successful transformation of Wiggins, which is another school that we had to close. But Wiggins has been transformed into a restorative justice hub and a health clinic. And, and that has been achieved through our partnership with the city by offering services to our community like open gym nights, food assistance, and tutoring programs. So again, there is long-term potential for the Kramer building after we you know, put money into it, revitalize it, money that will be reimbursed by the SDA, then there's a future for that building in that community, in that neighborhood. Um, and so we are looking forward to uh, seeing what the future holds um, in, the, in the long term. 
term. And now just a few more slides. The new East Side High swing space timeline, just so you have um, a bit of understanding. So what does this transition look like? M renovations have already started. Over the next few weeks, we will, be, we will be working closely with Principal Vega to schedule staff tour dates once the renovations are complete. This will be an opportunity for staff to familiarize themselves with the new environment before the start of the new school year. And I will um, close, we have a very special message from our mayor um, who was definitely also very excited about this project. Greetings to our Eastside students, parents, and Eastside families. I am Camden Mayor Victor Karstarfin. One of my main priorities as mayor of our city is to ensure our children are getting a 21st century education inside spaces that are equitable to their peers in the suburbs and that no Camden child is left behind. I want the students of today to have the same access and opportunities that I had growing up as a graduate of the Camden School District. And that's why I'm excited to join you today as we prepare for what will be a generational investment into our school system and in our students. An investment of more than $105 million in state funding to build a brand new East Side High School. The reconstruction is being supported by funding from the New Jersey Schools Development Authority and was included in the 2023 state fiscal year budget approved by Governor Phil Murphy. I was proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with Congressman Donald Norcross, Senator Nilsa Cruz Perez, Assemblyman Bill Spearman, Assemblyman Bill Moen, City Council President Angel Fuentes, and council members, along with Superintendent Katrina McCombs, school advisory board members and all of our Camden Strong team to deliver the news that a new high school is on its way and fully funded. This is an exciting project for the students and families of Camden and will be the second new high school built in the city in less than five years. When complete, students will have a modern space. We're talking about a media center, a special education life skills classroom, a new auditorium, cafeteria, and a new gym, as well as several trade labs that are including construction, medical arts, cosmetology, welding, performing arts, and more. In short, this will be a game-changing development for our city. And you can imagine a major part of this project involves community engagement and input sessions to ensure that the new school aligns with the needs and aspirations of the community. We're committed to working with our residents, Eastside students, and families to make the new Eastside High School the best possible learning environment for everyone. While the new Eastside is being constructed, let's all work together to make a smooth and successful transition to the renovated Kramer School. We would like to truly thank the entire Eastside community for your contributions and advocacy for the city's most priceless asset, our youth. Your voices are being heard and you have a hand in creating a bright new future at Eastside High School. Thank you. And so again, as you can see, we are all rally together to make sure that everything from swing space to construction to design to input to engagement that we're taking an approach that will be beneficial for all parties involved and so we're grateful um, and the next slide we're going to share a bit of information from the teaching and learning division um, and before i um, move forward I'm gonna ask a person to stand, and she does not know this is gonna happen. Um, but since we're moving into um, some areas that she oversees as our Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction, I'd like to ask Christy if she would come forward at, at this time just for a moment. I don't know where Christy, oh, there you are, Christy. All right, if she would come forward for a moment. And if you've taken a look at the board agenda already, you'll see that we have a very bittersweet, um, bit, some bittersweet news to announce. Christy, you can come up. Christy, I know, she's like, please, leave me alone, lady. <laughs> Christy is going to be um, retiring from the Camden City School District. So if you would please join me in giving Christy a round of applause. Yes, and you can see from her team and everyone else how valuable your service has been to our district. Not real 
for Thank me. You. And Christy has been in this district for almost 18 years serving our district, but in total, 27 years serving children, serving children, making sure their curricular needs are met, um, doing so many different jobs, um, but all focused on leading our students down a brighter path. So we want to thank you and this space to publicly acknowledge you and just to let you know openly how much we appreciate and value the work you've done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And so we'll move into some highlights um, from Teaching and Learning Division. And this area is, wow. When I read this highlight that was submitted to me by the team, I was overjoyed. And so the Camden City School District would like to congratulate Mr. William Bakanowski, middle school math teacher at H.B. Wilson. Is Mr. Bakanowski here? Oh, Mr. Bakanowski is here. Can you please stand up and wave? Give him a round of applause, and I'll tell you why later. I'll tell you why in a second. Um, also, middle school, a fifth grade math teacher at Cooper's Point, Miss Christina, Christina Rocio. Is Miss Rocio here? No, okay, but let's give her a round of applause. And also, fifth grade teacher of math at Caddo, Miss Tiffany Johnson. Was Miss Johnson? A yes, Miss Johnson! Woo! Rock stars. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you why I was so overjoyed. Um, so the three teachers who I just mentioned had the top three MSGP scores out of about 60 teachers in the district who received an MSGP one, an MSGP, MSGP one is, MSGP, I'm sorry, is one of several measures used to examine the work of educators under Achieve NJ. The MSG counts for 5% of each qualifying teachers and 10% of each qualifying school leaders and lead educators evaluation. So Mr. Bakanowski had the highest MSGP score in the district. The highest. At 68.5. Mr. B's seventh graders last year showed tremendous growth from the prior year when they were in sixth grade. Two of Mr. B's students scored in the 95th percentile. And that is applause worthy, worthy. And what that means is that compared to all of the seventh graders across the entire state of New Jersey who had a similar sixth grade test score from the prior year, his two students grew more than 95% of those other students in the state. Ms. Rocio had the, high, the second highest MSGP score in the district at 67.5%. Cooper's Point's fifth grade team had the highest combined MSGP score between math and ELA. This team was led by Ms. Christina Rocio in math and Ms. Deneen Duckett Edmonds in ELA. And last but not least, Ms. Tiffany Johnson had the third highest MSGP in the score in the district. Caddo's fifth grade team had the second highest combined MSGP score. This team was led by Ms. Tiffany Johnson Johnson in math and Ms. Leslie Golden in ELA. Three, three of Ms. Johnson's students are in the 99 Club. The 99 Club. And what is that? The 99 Club is for students who reach the 99th percentile, the highest possible percentile. This means these students grew more on the state assessment than everyone in their peer group across the entire state of New Jersey. That is noteworthy. This is the highest achievement you can have when it comes to growth measures on the New Jersey State Assessments. Ms. Johnson also had nine students who scored in the 90th percentile or greater, which was 22% of her students. So what a great accomplishment and testament to the diligence and dedication of our teachers and students. And let's give these stellar, remarkable educators a round of applause again. We thank you. We thank 
thank you. We salute you, Mr. Bakanowski. We salute you, Ms. Rocio, and we salute you, Ms. Johnson. Awesome. And, and why that is so important, and I'm going to be quicker with the rest, but it's important for us to pause because we see that we can achieve greatness and excellence right here in our district. And so we, what we are charged to do now is to take a look at what these star educators have done um, and figure out how to replicate that. So we spread it across the district. So we will be talking about not just three teachers next time, not just uh, several students, but more and and more students but what you have shown us is that it can happen with our young people right here in Camden so we can expand and scale up so again thank you and thank you to the team for working to ensure that they had the support they needed thank you again and uh, on the next slide, we're going to shift into a topic that um, is something that's so very important. When it comes to our students who have the opportunity to take the AP assessments and the AP College Board uh, advanced classes, we want to make sure that we're supporting them. So in order to provide our students with additional support who are going into their AP exams in May, the district offered an after-school AP tutoring program to any student enrolled in an AP English, history, math, or science course. And this came about also some of the feedback that we got from our student board reps um, shared that they needed more support in being able to be successful with the AP process. So tutoring sessions were held every Tuesday and, th and Thursday. Students who participated in tutoring were able to take a practice test on their specific AP course content and then receive an individualized report of where they needed additional support using study.com's AP exam series. Students could then complete many lessons based on their areas of need. District AP teachers served as tutors to provide additional support and to review core AP concepts that apply across content areas. Next slide is our March focus, which involves our parent advisory councils. This month, our parent advisory council received updates about our upcoming election and parent leadership training sessions. And there will be more shared um, in the future as to how those sessions have been going. Next slide. So we want to take a look at the updates from our Division of Talent and Labor Relations who have been working nonstop diligently around the clock in order to um, try to uh, combat the teacher shortage and the um, retirements that are happening not only in our district but across the nation. So we currently have a 7% teacher vacancy rate. And if I'm not mistaken, that's down by one or two percentage points from last month, um, which went, when it was at 9%. So the team is working hard and moving in the right direction. Our highest numbers of vacancies remain in the following subject areas, special ed, science, ESL, and physical education. But our team remains committed to recruiting as many teachers as we possibly can. And we see it through the second annual hiring fair, which was held, and it was a tremendous success. The team has completed the spring recruitment calendar, and they have started focusing on our efforts for recruitment for this school year and the upcoming school year. Thus far, the team has attended for career fairs at the College of New Jersey, Ryder University, Ramapo College, New Jersey School Jobs Virtual Fair, Temple University, Stockton, so many more, and they are looking for other opportunities. We also advertise on many, many different um, job boards, Indeed School, New Jersey School Jobs, K-12 Job Spot, LinkedIn, Handshake. They are working overtime, and I can't even read the whole list, but we're doing everything possible to make sure that we are attracting um, excellent talent into our school district. District. And on the next slide, not only do we have to attract that talent, but our chief talent officer, uh, Ms. Reese, always reminds me we have to make sure we retain them. So once we get them in the door, we have to make sure we keep them here. And so DTLR continues to strengthen our retention efforts through the Staff Connections Program. This permanent initiative is designed to deepen staff connections and investment in the district. To date, the Staff Connections Program has hosted 
hosted over 20 district-wide employee engagement events with more planned for the future. Additionally, on-site visits by EAP, that's our Employee Assistance Program, ComPsych, are being organized to increase awareness of the benefits offered by our EAP ComSite program. We are excited to report that this initiative has provided district leaders with a platform to plan up to two employee events. These events are designed to both increase engagement and show appreciation of, uh, for our employees. From February to April, we've held over 18 employee engagement events and we are planning over 30 district-wide events in total. There is some direct feedback coming from this initiative. Direct feedback from Mr. Salo Roman, CWA president, highlights the impact of these efforts. His, he is quoted as saying, this is a fantastic thing to show that the custodial and maintenance staff are really appreciated and all the work that we do is noticed. We really do appreciate it. HR has partnered with leaders at each school location to assist in identifying best practices for creating thriving, employee-centered activities. We are ensuring that these events are planned in and in place before the end of this school year. So again, we like to, we will be uh, continuing to provide periodic updates to highlight the great work being completed through this very important initiative. And on the next slide, we are so excited to announce that through the partnership between Rowan University, the New Jersey Department of Education, and the Camden, School City, Camden City School District, the Teach Camden Initiative is expected to launch in May 2024, which is right around the corner. And again, Teach Camden, the Teach Camden program is a Camden-specific Grow Your Own Teacher Initiative designed to assist paraprofessionals who are currently employed with the Camden City School District and who have earned their bachelor's degree to become certified as a teacher by December 2025 through an 18-month intensive program. And so that is amazing. That, that is absolutely amazing. And a lot of hard work has gone into that area. Kudos to Ms. Reese and the team and uh, just Dr. Wright. Everyone working together, uh, Rowan University, to make this happen. 19 staff members are being considered for admission into this program and will receive a full scholarship to participate in this accelerated program. In exchange, the district is requesting each of these participants to commit to remain employed with CCSD in a teaching role for five years. The funding, yes, and so that, that speaks to a, um, a career path where it is uh, consistent and sustained. The funding for this program has been secured and the MOU is currently being reviewed. This initiative allows CCSD to make a substantial investment in our existing staff by growing our own teacher pipeline. Next slide. And so 27 paraprofessionals initially submitted their application to teach Camden. However, 15 have met the minimum requirements to be considered for this initiative. We are awaiting the decision from the Department of Ed on four paras who are still in the review process, bringing it to that 19 number we talked about. The selection process is completed in conjunction with the New Jersey Department of Ed to ensure that those individuals who have signed up meet the requirements for admission and pre-assessment of certification programs offered. And then once this process is completed, all applicants will receive notification regarding their admission status. Those applicants who are admitted into this program will also receive a welcome packet outlining next steps, which will include an orientation session for this program. And we will keep you updated um, as we continue to uh, announce more information about this exciting in 
innovative program. And last part of the presentation, and my favorite, district highlights. So again, um, we want to just show you images of our students in action. So this first highlight is our EMT cohort update. Over the past two weeks, our EMT students have been focusing in on orthopedic trauma skills. They have successfully learned how to apply pelvic binders and traction splints, demonstrating both understanding and proficiency in these critical areas. Additionally, they were able to take advantage of the beautiful weather by practicing stretcher skills outdoors. We are pleased to report that the cohort is progressing well and showing a commendable level of dedication and skill in their training. Next slide. This is Autism Awareness Month, and students participating are participating in many different activities for fine and gross motor development, sensory processing, attention concentration, and socialization. And you can see some of the images of our students and staff members um, enjoying and honoring and observing Autism Awareness Month. This next slide is also a, a powerful slide. Girls Rewire the Industry. So this month, we partnered with Girls Rewire the Industry, presented by BAM Electrical Contracting, in partnership with the Girl Scouts of South Central Southern New Jersey and Turner Construction. This collaboration allowed 50 middle school young ladies to gain thrilling hands-on experience in the field of construction, led by women and for women. Led by women and for women. Students rotated through various electrical tasks, such as distribution, rough in, pipe bending, communications, and estimating and bidding. Thank you to Darnell Ripp and Asia Foreman for introducing our district to the, these incredible partners and career opportunities for our young people. And that is such a powerful image. Next slide. This month, we celebrated the $10 million reconstruction project on 27th Street, and it's renaming after the legendary Woodrow Wilson, now Eastside High alum, Mr. Mike Rozier, Heisman Trophy winner. And it was an amazing, amazing day. Um, and you can see how happy and pleased everyone was for not only honoring Mr. Rozier, but also that the path and the road um, was being repaired. Next slide. Financial Literacy Month kickoff, as we continue to highlight Financial Literacy Month, we were honored to partner with the Hill Family Center for College Access at Rutgers University Camden, and Mr. Caden Harris, he was so remarkable, a remarkable 13-year-old high school graduate, 13-year-old high school graduate, and CEO, who took the stage as a keynote speaker at the Dudley Family School Literacy, uh, Financial Literacy Symposium. And he was such a, um, a focused young man, but he was able to engage the students. So it was a really, really powerful um, uh, display. And it was so great to just celebrate Caden and also see him motivate his peers to do even greater. Next slide. Congratulations to our Camden High cheerleaders um, for their second place win at the 2024 National Black Cheerleading Championship in North Carolina. Uh, it was their first time going and they got second place, so we don't know, we, we know what will happen next time. Um, but we were so very proud of our young people who always are um, just so amazing in their representation of their school and their district. Next slide. Middle School Cheer Expo was held at Eastside High School. And it was a wonderful, wonderful event. And I tell you, it was so wonderful. And Veterans School took home first place. But you know what? Every person who participated, um, you just saw the smiles on their faces. So we're doing everything possible as a district to make sure we're engaging our young people in ways that meet that are meaningful to them um, and so these are some of the activities that are growing out of our um, our engagement office and our climate and culture office that is working diligently to keep our young people involved, especially that critical middle school age group. And just two or three more slides. Um, on the next slide, you'll see um, a highlight of Read Across America Day. And again, we didn't meet last month, but we wanted to highlight uh, that cream 
and ECDC had several distinguished guests from the Camden County Hall of Justice, uh, CCSD Central Office and Advisory Board members who visited their school in honor of Read Across America. So we wanted to thank publicly Judge Dortch, who came to read to our young people, Judge Schweitzer, Ms. Cameline Nathaniel, Dr. Tracy Thompson, uh, our Acting Board President Nanamdi Nelson, and Mr. Orlando Pettigrew for reading to our cream cats for Read Across America. We would like to thank CEA FAST for planning an awesome literacy event. Event. It was a very, very wonderful event. Um, from what I am told, I was not able to be there, but it was, uh, the word that came back was so powerful, and we must continue to encourage our young people to love reading. Today, we are also recognizing all of our CCSD bus drivers for taking care of our precious cargo during the school year. Happy school bus a bus driver appreciation day. We truly appreciate them. And our district real mentoring program on April 19th, our scholastic real mentors um, visited Forest Hill to read aloud to our students. It was wonderful to see our partners, community leaders, and high school students come together, not only to read to our younger students, but also to engage in and create activities that help our students understand and comprehend what they are reading. We also had superintendents who came from Newark, who came from North Jersey schools um, and other surrounding school districts just to learn what we're doing here in Camden City School District in partnership with Scholastic and our mentoring program. Um, so this is really, um, again, we want to ensure our young people know how special and valuable it is to love literacy for a lifetime. Save the date. We are excited to announce that STEM Camden will be hosting STEM Saturday on April 27th from 9 to 12.30 at Morgan Village Middle School. It's an awesome event. I went last year, and please tell your friends, tell your family. The students will love it. There are so many hands-on hands -on science activities um, for grades K through 12, and it is free. So we hope to see you there. Save another date. The Camden City School District will be hosting a youth basketball clinic to help improve your basketball skills and to learn the fundamentals of the game. The next clinic is tomorrow, actually, Wednesday, from 6 to 7.30. We're looking forward to seeing you, and the QR code is there. Let's make sure we get this information out to our young people. We're posting it. We're sending it home. We're doing all of that. But if you have young people who you know would benefit from being in a fun, safe space, um, Please, let them know. We want them to be engaged, and we are working diligently to do just that. Graduation, who can believe that we are almost um, at the time period of graduation? So we wanted to share the graduation schedule, and again, all this will be on the website. Monday, June 24th, Creative Arts will have its graduation at 2 o'clock p.m., Big Picture Learning Academy, Academy will follow at 3.30 p.m. and Camden High will have its graduation at 5.30 p.m. And on the following day, Tuesday, June 25th, Brim Medical Arts will have its graduation at 2 o'clock p.m. and we will close out with the last graduation that will be held at the Eastside High School location, and that will be at 5 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday. So again, um, save those dates, and let's come out and celebrate our young people for making it across that, that finish line, that first finish line in their careers and their future endeavors. Uh, save the date for the summer. We're looking forward to bringing back our SWAG uh, program, and we are, and this is our summer youth employment program offered by the Camden City School District for students who attend Camden City School District schools. The SWAG applications, and that's students working to achieve greatness. That's what SWAG means. Those applications will open up tomorrow, April 24th through May 10th. For more information, please visit our website at www.camdencityschools.org. Uh, we want to employ as many young people as we possibly can because we know that they love it. You should hear the testimony and maybe we'll have them come and talk to you about what their experiences are like. And there's another plug for AP Tutoring. 
I talked about it, but we are excited to announce that CCSD is offering AP tutoring as an additional support ahead of the upcoming AP exams for all district students enrolled in one of the following AP courses, and these are our advanced placement courses. Language and Composition, AP Literature and Composition, AP African American Studies, AP US History, AP US Government and Politics, AP Precalculus, AP, Bi AP Biology, AP and environmental science and these are offered every Tuesday and Thursday from 3.30 to 4.30 um, right here on the Camden High campus. Any student interested is encouraged to come check it out and report to the following locations in the creative arts wing of the building. Um, C216 for AP Science, 225 for AP History, CT C228 for AP Math, and C226 for AP ELA courses. That information, of course, will be available at the school level and on the district website. And thank you so much for your attentiveness as we close out that portion I'd like to ask everyone to transition back not everyone just the board members and those who are on the stage to transition back to the stage where we will have our advisory board um, uh, acting president or his designee to salute our retirees thank you so much for your attention Congratulations to the following retirees. Christine Abernathy for 25 years of service. Angela Adams for two years and nine months. Jean Daughtry for 20 years of service. Maria Espinosa Jordan for seven years and nine months of service. Sherry Lynn Hall for 17 years and nine months of service. Estella Hicks, 26 years and eight months of service. Sylvia Hicks for 34 years and nine months of service. Kathleen Kimbrough for 25 years of service. John Cruel for nine years of service. Linda Lumpkin, 27 years and eight months of service. Kathleen Medley Echeverria for 24 years of service. Magali Salas for 31 years and eight months of service. Gary Thomas, 32 years of service. Angela Thomas, seven years, four months of service. Larray Vaughn, 15 years of service. And Lisa Wallenberg, 36 years and nine months of service. Angel Hamilton, 17 years and eight months of service. Jacqueline Rentas for 35 years and nine months of service. Olga Estevas McCurdy, or McMurtry, I'm sorry, 35 years of service. Renee Candelori for 25 years of service. Michael Cannon for 33 years of service. Miss Dolores Turner Lewis for 35 wonderful years of service at Cooper's Point. Um, Anna LaRue for 35 years of service, and to our very own Miss Christy Weitzel for 17 years and six months of dedicated service to the Camden City School District. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our retirees. And um, Christy, I just want to say that you do, or have done, should I say, an excellent job in working with you the past year and some change that I've been working with you. You come, you're dedicated, you serve with a smile, and you are always ready with answers, and you're not, you're not uh, hesitant in being able to find the answers that you don't necessarily have the answers to. So we thank you for your commitment and your dedication. At this time, I'll turn the meeting over to our general counsel for uh, the public comments portion of our meeting. Thank you, Superintendent. The Camden City School District welcomes the attendance and comments from all members of the public at its meetings. This public comment period is your time to present your comments to the board and the superintendent. 
Each person who signed up to comment will have three minutes. Uh, you'll be notified when your three minutes are up, and you cannot yield your time to another person. When it is your turn to speak, please come to the podium and address all of your comments to the superintendent or general counsel. Please be courteous to your fellow community members and keep your comments within the time frame allotted so that everyone has the opportunity to speak. At the end of the three minutes, the microphone will be cut off or we will end your comment. We also request that you please conduct yourself in a respectful manner. The First Amendment is not absolute and the board can prohibit language that is inappropriate or vulgar. For anyone whose comments or actions harass, intimidate, or threaten the safety of any person, we will provide you with a warning or immediately end your comment time. We will not interrupt you during your three minutes of comment unless we deem it necessary. If a member of the public speaks negatively about a staff member, interruption may be necessary to caution the speaker of the dangers of slander. After the public comment period is closed, the superintendent or her designee will address your questions to the extent provided by law. I will begin by calling the names of the individuals wishing to provide in-person comments before reading the written submissions. Um, as a quick reminder, all written public comments read aloud during the board meeting are the views of the person submitting public comment and are not the views of the superintendent, the advisory board, or the Camden City School District. Thank you. And the first individual signed up for public comment this evening is Michael A. Wiggins. Good evening all. <clears throat> Sonia recognizing Madam Superintendent to the General Counsel, everyone in the sound of my voice, good evening. My name is Mike Anthony Wiggins and I am the proud owner of Progressive Traditions Leadership and Coaching. Our mission as a company is to coach our youth and convince them the value of adding and seeing value in themselves. Subsequently, once you see value in yourself, you then have the obligation, you can see the importance and significance of seeing and being valued and having the opportunity to add value to yourself. How do we achieve those objectives? As a coach, a certified coach, public speaker, and a trainer, we have a curriculum that is geared towards teaching our youth, youth-centric, youth-focused, the importance of growing and being a positive, reflective role model of themselves and their community. We do that with curriculum that is centered on social and emotional competencies. We have lessons that speak on the power of influence, for example. Understanding that you're being influenced every day of your life. And that influence absolutely affects your self response, your self-confidence, your self-awareness. Likewise, when you are being influenced, you have the ability to influence people around you, which speaks to your ability and effect to socially be aware of what's going on and what your actions, what your demeanor, what your conduct, what value that has on the community. We have an opportunity to talk about understanding what a growth environment is. A growth environment that is conducive for your own personal growth. Our youth are put in situations where sometimes the environment is not so conducive. We teach them how to manage those circumstances. I teach them how to create an environment that is absolutely conducive for your growth. What does that look like? Who do you have in your circle of friends? Who do you have as your mentors, your advisors, your friends? How do you manage your social networking? Creating an environment for growth is absolutely positive for our youth, and that's what I specialize in. We talk about other topics. Smart goal setting, values-based goal setting, how to accomplish and get over failures, how to learn from a failure, how to turn that into a positive. At the end of the day, all of my students, all of my classes that I've taught in, they understand that they are leaders. And a leader has two responsibilities. The first responsibility is to lead themselves, that's the personal growth. Second responsibility is to lead others, and that's the service to others. So I've submitted a proposal to the board. Thank you, Mr. Wiggins. 
Next person signed up to comment is Mr. Jose Delgado. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to direct my uh, comments to the superintendent. As you probably know, uh, Ms. Coons, I, um, I met and exchanged emails with members of your staff concerning the proposition uh, that the school system put together a district-wide uh, curriculum that addressed African-American and Latino culture uh, across the uh, subject areas and grades. In other words, infused it completely. Uh, I met with some members of your staff, like I said, with Ms. Lola Moore and Mr. Theo Spencer. We had a very nice discussion. They were supposed to get back to me. I haven't heard from them in months. Uh, as a result of that meeting, uh, I got a copy of the African American curriculum and the Latino cu curriculum, curiously named Latinx. And after reading the Latino curriculum, I was shocked and disappointed that it ignored the Latino experience in the United States, in New Jersey, and in this city. For example, I searched a few words, word search, and I searched for Puerto Rico, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Dominican Republic. Nothing came up. Those are other re relevant words that you would expect to see in a curriculum of those types were not there. They talked about Argentina, they talked about everything else that had nothing to do with the African American experience, with the Latino experience in Camden. The curriculum, the Latino curriculum is an insult to my community because it ignores our contributions to this nation, this state, and this city. This curriculum is so devoid of relevance to our students that it can actually harm them psychologically. They're not there. I don't want our students to experience that. I wouldn't want my son or daughter to have to go sit through a class being directed through such a curriculum. I also respectfully, uh, uh, respectfully point out that the African American curriculum, though it's much better than the Latin American community uh, curriculum, does not, in my opinion, do justice to the rich and important contributions made by the African American community to this nation, state, and city. I request in the most strongest way possible that you please impanel the committee or committees representative of our city to develop curricula that does justice to our respective histories and cultures. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lagato. The next person signed up for comment is Ms. Rasha Dickerson. Hey, good evening, everybody. How y'all doing? Rancha Dickerson. So I wanted to respond to, um, this is for the full school board members. Eastside High, I hear you being very transparent about the process, but I think that we probably need to do a learning exchange with the students because I think there were some missteps, and I think you can learn a lot from this campus as you move on to the next campus. And then I also think that we, what we should do is move SOAR and PRIDE into its own building together. I think we should stop taking space up from our schools, particularly at Morgan Village Middle School, take that program out that school, and allow that school to be a thriving sixth to eighth grade component, and move those people over into, those people, excuse me, students over into um, when you get finished with uh, the school that Eastside High will be in. Move them there, because I think that that just speaks to our schools being full, but it's not full of students that we need to be inside that school. Um, I'll move on to Camden City Public School enrollment. Our traditional schools are in need of support. When you see enrollment dropping, it's an indicator that we're not getting the type of financial support we need. So I'm asking again, as a public school parent, traditional public school parent, what are you doing to ensure that enrollment stays high in traditional public schools? Where's the funding? Where's the, the, the advertisement? Where's the commercials? Where is it? Because our parents need to feel like our schools are thriving as well. The next thing I'll speak on, and I want to emphasize Morgan Village again and Forest Hill, their numbers are declining because you're not supporting the school. Uh, the next thing I want to speak about is QSAC. 
So we have, I'm gonna be on this for one second. CUSAC um, has been updated for 2018. We are due for a report and on April 29th of 2024, Superintendent, I know you've been going up and back and forth to the state the, the, describing what's happening here in this district, but we're very concerned on how do we get from under being lower than our, the standards of QSAC. 80% is our, 80 is the number or 80%? We need to be there. I was looking at the numbers for state takeover from the report. Jersey City was under state takeover from 1989 to 2022, that's 33 years. Patterson was under state takeover from 1991 to 2021, that's 30 years. Nor was under state takeover from 1995 to 2020, that's 25 years. We've been under state takeover from 2013 till now, and that's 11 years. Do we have to get into the 20s? Can we get this right? And what can we do as a community to help us get there? I know it's a state fiscal monitor here, but we are done with QSEC. I know it's something that has to be in standard in New Jersey, but we should be compliant. I see that we're growing in some areas, but how come we can't get over the hump? And that's what concerns me because that would change a lot of things that are happening here from the advisory board to a state appointed superintendent until we can have our own superintendents that's, that we have in Kansas City to other things. So I'm very concerned about what we can do to make sure that we get from under the chokehold of QSAC from, being in, um, from not being compliant. Right now, based on an article that went out, the DPR area for governance is now at 94 percent and instruction program is now at 61 percent based on what was said that came out recently. We need to get there. So I just want to make sure we can make sure that happens sooner than later. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Thank you. The next individual signed up for comment is Karen Borelli Luke. Oh, wow. Good evening. Karen Borelli Luke. So I've been in this district for a pretty long time, nearly 40 years seen some good, bad, and the ugly. And we seeing repeated process, as Rancho brought up about transitioning here. Um, we saw some mistakes and transitioning, getting ready for Eastside. One of the huge things that you talked about was the athletic program, you know, in preparation. But what we didn't discuss and is a concern is my content area is the health and phys ed. It's a four-year requirement for graduation. It is not something you can put in a classroom, and it's not something that you can put in the gym size of Kramer. There is no outside room, all of which I'm very familiar with at the old brim on Copewood and what we did there. And what I'm also concerned with, you have people with experience that have gone through this and could be part of that planning that have the expertise in that content area that could share that with you. There's a lot of ideas that could, you know, rather than reinvent the wheel since we, so, some of us have been through that before, um, to use some ideas in doing that. Um, I just think that that would be a little comforting to staff at the, you know, at East Side and especially the health and phys ed people because from what we understand, there's like one health classroom and of course a gym that is the size of a box. Um, you know, and having taught at the elementary level as well, I know exactly, having taught at Davis, like how many high school bodies can fit effectively and safely in there, and that's just not gonna work. So there has to be alternatives, and you know, I just think it's better to be part of the solution that gets rid of the hype um, of what's going on and some of the hysteria. Um, having been through some of that myself, going from the old Copewood brim to this one, there wasn't as much planning as there should have been with the health and the phys ed, because you had four schools coming together to share. I just think even just going there, there it, we can avoid some of that if we just do that. That's all, thank you. Thank you. The next individual signed up for comment is Mangalisa. Uh, okay. Can somebody get this here to the board, pre uh, board member? Yeah, that's fine. I think Ms. Beeman is going to come take copies for you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beeman. <clears throat> My uh, comments is uh, directed to the acting president. You had made a comment about the 
the area over there by ACDC school and uh, what's the name, uh, the uh, Far Hill school about cleaning that up. It'd be a hundred years before you can clean up that, that stuff. That's Monsanto. Monsanto kills the weeds. Monsanto throws uh, uh, stuff on the Korean uh, Vietnam War where the crops will not grow for a hundred years. That stuff is there. It's four feet down. When they took and uh, built the other school, replaced the uh, ACDC school, four feet down. And they put uh, virgin dirt. Then they put a slab on it. Then they said they were going to put air monitors up in there if, when, if it cracks or anything. The fumes come out there and they'll know about it. They didn't do it. Those kids are emotional and physically and mentally disturbed and they come from the city and from the suburbs. Oh, and by the way, all the teachers that worked in the, uh, what's that, the D building, they're dead. They're drinking that water. And if you look on that, 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 that number four, number five, that's talking about ACDC. Look at that there. 351 per, per parts per billion. That's arsenic. Anything over 15, you're dead. Cooper Hospital North, and they just land back making the money. Our kids are dying. Our children are having babies, our, our young daughters are having babies, and the baby's encased in the water. If you're not drinking the water from the source, it ain't no good. American Water is in here to buy the uh, water wells there. That's what they're going to do. And they're going to take and raise your rate. They already raised your rate, so we're not going to pass the rate on to the citizens. But who's going to pay for it? The citizens. And there is still lead in the drinking water in the city of Camden. And I asked him at Rutgers, and he said, I'll tell you, but he didn't. But we can get that information. Over requests, you can make an over request to get anything. Like closed sessions, we can get, we can over that, what you're talking about in there. It's been done. And if I got to get a lawyer, y'all wind up paying. So those open set, those closed sessions that you do, that's not enough. On the second page, tell you the impact of all that stuff. You know, what is this here? The impact of all this here water. The other thing you made the same about those jobs. Thank you, Mr. Mangalito. Thank you, Mr. Mangalito. Thank you, sir. We do have your written submission as well. We will make sure to review it. Thank you, sir. And they only trained five people, and only three of them got jobs in the city of Canada. I'm going to call up the next individual for public comment. For our young people. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Y'all do a lot of talking, but you ain't walking. Thank you, sir. The next individual for public comment, can I have you come up to the microphone? Is Patricio Asalito. You do not put your hand on nobody. Yeah, I, I hear what you say. Okay, yeah. What? What? What did you say? Oh, I hear that there. I know that. But yeah, yeah. So what you gonna do? All right, I heard what you said. I'm just trying to finish up what I said. So that ain't no problem. And madam, thank you, sir. You rude. Because last time you did it, you allowed some students to talk over at their time. So if you're going to be consistent, be consistent. Thank you, sir. Okay? Yep. And, and we have your written submissions. We'll make sure we review it. Have a good evening, sir. I live here. How many of y'all live here? I think Mr. Patricio left. Okay, thank you, Ms. Perry. 
The last person we have signed up for public comment this evening is M. White. Mark. Take care of my babies or you're going to lose your job. No one do that. I'll, I'll be waiting for you, Madam uh, Superintendent, to finish up our dialogue from the meeting. It didn't happen. Okay. Uh, oh, man, God, don't mind me. <laughs> Mr. White, yes, are you prepared to provide your comment? <laughs> yeah, yes, um, good evening. Uh, my name is Officer White, Mark White. Um, I'm a representative of security. I'm the union rep for security. Uh, I'm coming here on the behalf that we received a letter that I'm asking the superintendent to take a real good look at the letter that we received to our department of searching. Um, I think you should go back and re, uh, resend that letter because searching is very critical to high schools because if you know anything about security, um, when kids come in, they come in with marijuana, cigarettes, um, vape pens that don't ring. So it's hard for us not to catch it if we don't physically touch them to see where it's at. And if you don't know about 3D printer, the guns and plastic knife, they don't ring either. So unfortunately, we did have an incident there, but I'm not going to get into it. But we did have an incident there, hoping that you can resend that letter that we had got, because already you're cutting us off at the hands. You, you took away the handcuffs. Okay, we dealt with that. Now you're taking away this. What else y'all gonna take away? Y'all saying we the best that y'all got, then give us the tools to have what we got. Because right now, y'all taking everything from us. What's next? The x-ray machines, metal detectors. You know, I'm just here to try to keep the kids and the staff safe. That's my job. That's what I was born here for to do my job. And right now, y'all cutting us off at the hands. Now, I always keep in contact with my, uh, my boss. Now, we talking about a new system to put in place with the new high school, but we talked about it, it's too much money. It's, it's um, evolution, I'm correct? No? Huh? And ball? Evolved. evolved. My fault. Thank you, sir. It's called Evolved. Um, many colleges, many uh, colleges, campus have it, many stadiums have it. It's very, very up to date. It lets you know what you got in your body. It keeps track of everything. Uh, what you bring in, who brought it in, and everything. And it gives you a red flag if the same person try to bring something else in. So if y'all want to take us into the future, this is something that y'all need to look into and invest in. Because right now, y'all just really cutting us off at the hands and we really can't do anything if y'all keep cutting us off at the hand. We like to do our job to the best of our ability. Thank you, Mr. White. There are two written comments this evening. The first is from our student, um, Board Rep Damian Irizarry, who was unable to be here this evening. Oh. Uh, okay. Just go ahead and read it. Great. Hello, good evening. My name is Damian Irizarry. I am a junior and a student board representative at Brim Medical Arts. Away from, um, away from being an A-plus student at Brim, I am a Camden High cheerleader. I just want to publicly thank Ms. Katrina McCombs for making it possible by playing for the Camden High cheerleading team to travel to North Carolina to compete in the National Black Cheerleading Competition. Your contribution made all of us happy and been exposed to amazing opportunities. By me attending, I've realized how impactful it can be by being a male cheerleader. cheerleader. But I've also realized how world-changing it is to be a male cheerleader that shakes. So thank you for giving us the amazing experience we all here experienced at Camden High, High School cheerleading. Here at Brim and on the campus, it has been the same since the last board meeting. There are no cons and there are no new pros. 
Only thing I would say that would need to be fixed here on the campus is when there is a fight, multiple security from various places are required to come to end the issue. But it also leaves those places they were stationed at uh, not to be monitored, which I, also, which I would also say needs help at Eastside High. Due to there was a video of kids fighting and it took longer for security to come. Unlike here on campus, they are there in a blink of an eye. We should have the same ex two expectations and security willing to uphold those expectations at both campuses. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Arizari. Um, the final written submission is from Griselda Ruiz. Hello, my name is Griselda Ruiz. I am a mother that has two children that attend Brim Medical Arts. I've been having issues with communication. The school only emails me in English and I don't speak English or read English. I brought this issue to the school and someone at the school mentioned that they will see if they can start sending the emails in Spanish. But it's been three months and I still receive them in English. I would like to see if something can be done regarding this matter because I have to continue to contact parents invincible, Ms. Carla, to read my school emails. I don't want to continue to call them just to read my school's emails. I hope you take this into consideration. Thank you, Ms. Ruiz, for your comment. And Superintendent, that concludes public comment. I will turn it over to you for responses. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone who uh, participated today and who uh, shared your voice and your concerns, as well as solutions. I heard a lot of solutions that were recommended um, in um, coupled in with the written comments. So we appreciate the definite solutions oriented approach. Um, so I'm gonna just kinda go through uh, the comments and give some responses. Um, so Mr. Wiggins, if you are, yes, you are still here, Mr. Wiggins. Thank you so much for taking the time Thank you for much, so much for taking um, the opportunity to come and share with us information on your program and very specifically, and thank you for sending information to us um, so that we can review it and see how it fits into um, what we're offering um, with regard to SEL competencies, goal setting, um, uh, as well as coaching. Um, we know it's so important for our students to have mentoring as well. So please know that that is being taken um, under consideration and review. And we thank you for coming to this meeting today to share um, your program with the entire board. Um, I want to also respond um, to um, Mr. Delgado. Thank you for being here, Mr. Delgado. Thank you, for, as always, for your input, um, for your feedback, and for um, just the questions that you ask and provide us with the opportunity to think through and make sure that our practices are those that we can um, ensure are going to support our young people's growth and development. Um, so we do thank you for your feedback you, that you've provided tonight as well, and we will reevaluate um, both those curricular areas that you discussed, both the African American Studies and Latinx Studies curriculums. They were put together by teams that included multiple stakeholders. Uh, the texts and resources were also evaluated by these same stakeholders, but we will um, also follow up. I, I um, understand that you did not have a follow up from the last conversation you had with our team. We'll make sure you have that follow up as well and take a look also at um, um, our curricular areas. Um, and thank you again for the solutions-oriented uh, response. Um, Ms. Dickerson, she's still here? No, she had to step out? Okay, that's okay. So I wanna thank you, though I wanna make sure it's on the record. Um, Yes, we should definitely try to learn from our missteps um, when it comes to the um, building of this school, uh, and we have done that in our conversations with SDA, um, just to make sure that there are um, things that are not repeated. Uh, but thank you for that feedback. Uh, thank you for your suggestion around uh, a possible solution for SOAR students um, who are currently attending Eastside High School um, during the swing space. Um, we are definitely putting more um, emphasis on our marketing, um, but we are continuing to grow our, our strategies. Our advisory board also pushes us us to make sure um, that we are doing a better job with getting the word out about the great things happening in our district. So we are looking at innovative ways, looking at our org chart. We um, 
have some changes that will be going into effect that would help us to be able to be more effective in that area. Um, and with regard to CUSAC, the comments there, we um, are definitely in agreement. We want our district to be shepherded back into sustainable local control. And we have our CUSAC visit coming this Monday. Um, and where we are now, uh, in each of the areas, we are doing pretty well in, with the exception of operations, where we score 75%, and also um, curriculum and instruction, where we're at 61%. And the reason for that in INP, is, in curriculum and instruction, is uh, because of state assessment scores. So once our state assessment results improve, then we can gain more port points in the curriculum and instruction area. Right now, we've maxed out, um, and we have revised our curriculum. Everything is as it should be, but when it comes to performance, that's where we're losing the points. So to that question, what do we need to do to really move to local control? Everything right now hinges on our students achieving. Um, our finances have been cleaned up. All the other areas are cleaned up. We've got to now make sure that our young people are exceeding um, and growing and demonstrating that growth. So that is the area that is holding us back. Um, Ms. Borelli Luke, are you still here? Wave your hand. Thank you, Ms. Borelli Luke, for your feedback and comments and being solutions oriented. Um, yes, so our engagement, I'm not sure if you heard my full presentation, but there will be opportunities for teachers, staff members, community members to be involved in providing feedback um, for the new Eastside High. And we will definitely make sure that we take into consideration those concerns around health and PE, not only in, and now the swing space, we're a little bit limited, but we can kind of figure out some uh, solutions there uh, and are open to any thoughts and suggestions that you may have, um, but definitely want to make sure that our um, critical stakeholders who are teachers are a part of the planning process and there will be that opportunity afforded. Mr. Mangaliso, um, did he step out? Oh, hey, Mr. Mangaliso, I'm sorry, the table is in the way. That's why I couldn't see you. Um, thank you for the information that you uh, shared with us this evening. I will have to take another look at it because I'm just getting it. Um, and I was not privy to some of the information here, so please allow me just to do some research and take a look um, at what you shared. Um, I want to um, assure you that we've had all of our testing for our water complete. Uh, and if you need to have, I know you asked me for some information before, we can get that from our facilities team so that it is up to date. Um, but again, we are definitely concerned about um, our young people and want to ensure that environmentally, um, everything that is coming into their bodies is gonna help them to grow and thrive. So again, thank you for um, sharing the information. Thank you for being willing and available to walk me through this. Um, I'm saying that proactively because it's the first time that I'm seeing it. Thank you, Ms. Okay, thank you so much, and I will do that. Mr. White, you still here, Mr. White? Mr. White, Mr. White, oh, he left? Okay, so that's okay. I saw Mr. White earlier today when I was over at Eastside High. Our team was there. We had a chance to walk through the lunches, talk to students, talk about the swing space with our students um, on the heels of a staff meeting that we held uh, virtually today. And so I do want to make sure that um, you know, and I, Officer Fletcher also had some questions for me, um, but I will have that, I will take those pieces into um, consideration in consultation with our general counsel as well as Dr. Smith um, because there is a desire to see us pull back on our guidance around um, uh, who is searched and, and what we're searching for. So I understand the complexities, but let me um, talk to counsel and we will talk with um, your leadership to ensure that we're moving forward. And any new for, uh, equipment that's brought into the building that's vetted through the um, senior director of, of uh, security as well as um, our lead for um, that operations department. So we will definitely circle back. And I believe that was the last comment uh, Damien, thank you for being here. He left to, oh, Damien, you're there, you're there. Thank you for your comment and also thank you for your um, feedback with regard to the fight security. We will definitely um, look into that as well. And I know Ms. Ruiz may not be here because she submitted a written comment, um, but we will definitely speak with and work with the uh, staff at 
Brim Medical Arts because there is no reason that we're not sending information. There sh should be no reason that we're not sending information out uh, in English and Spanish. We have the capability. And so we definitely um, want to make sure that the coaches are working with the leaders there to ensure that that happens. Um, and I want to thank everyone. At this time, I'll turn it over to our board um, acting vice pre acting president to uh, share any um, feedback that the board has or comments. Thank you, Superintendent. At this time, are there any board members who have any comments? I'll start off with Board Member Jackson. Good evening, everyone. I um, just want to say thank you for everyone who came out, gave a comment. Um, first, I want to say thank you to Damien, who always shows up, shows out. Even after the game, he was able to still step in today, still able to give some comments. Um, so we thank you for that. And congratulations for you guys going all the way to South Carolina and bringing home the trophy for us. So thank you all for representing um, and doing it with excellence. I saw the videos. You guys killed it. Um, my last and second comment um, is for Ms. Karen Borelli-Luke. Is she still here? Okay, she's not here, but I will still make my comment just so that it is on record. Um, I went to the former Creative Arts High School, and I know that Ms. Borelli-Luke taught at the former Brim High School. Neither high schools had a gym, and we made it work. And so whether we were bused to gym, whether we still had health in our classrooms and had gym elsewhere, we still were able to make it work and there were no complaints. And I do believe that Ms. Borelli was at that previous location as well. So as proactive as we were back then, we're gonna to need to be as proactive now because this is only a temporary situation. We're not saying that the kids won't have a gym forever. They will be temper, and they do have a gym at this site. So we're, again, we're talking about two schools that had no gym whatsoever to where this school has an actual nice size. So if we're breaking down the classes how we need to and we're just being, again, proactive, being creative with how we can make it work and still be able to execute that for our students, I don't think that that should really be an issue or a problem. Um, um, I, I would like more solutions than problems um, when our, our educators come to the meeting. So I don't, I, don't have a pro, I don't have a problem with issues. Please let us know what you're feeling, what you're thinking, and what's going on, but also be proactive and let us know how we can help in fixing it. It's, everything is workable. Everything is figure outable. There is no such thing as no, and there's no such thing as I don't know. We can figure out everything. We are resourceful. Um, and so I would like to have all of us keep that in mind when it comes to our students. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Jackson. Are there any other board members? Board Member Alvarez? Thank you, Acting Board President Omni Nelson. Um, I actually want to um, congratulate uh, Christy um, and say you will be missed. Thank you for all your dedication and hard work so many years that you've dedicated to Camden City School and the students and the parents. Um, and best of luck on your endeavors. I also want to acknowledge Parents Invincible, although they're not here, the two representative, um, they've, they're always involved with the parents and the students, and I just want to thank them for everything that they do. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Alvarez. Any other board members? Board Member Hudson. Thank you, uh, thank you, Acting President Nelson. Uh, I echo the sentiments to Christy. Uh, your retirement, thank you for everything that you've uh, done for our district, for our kids, your investment in our community. Um, you know, they say to, to be retired, it means that uh, you were tired before and you're gonna be tired again, retired. So, <laughs> um, but congratulations. I hope you, you know, wish you uh, much success on your next journey. Also, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to Wholesome Riches. I was able to attend their, their food distribution yesterday. Uh, it was just a really amazing, amazing energy, um, seeing them give back to the community. I think they served over, uh, well, we served over 215 families. Um, and our kids from vet school were really, really engaged. Um, and it's just amazing to see that, because Camden is the, uh, the largest food desert in the state of New Jersey. Um, you know, so there's much need here, but it's, it's good to see that uh, that our kids identify the problem and they're all hands on deck on, on addressing it uh, whichever way they can. And having the support and the presence of the teachers, the school, the staff and uh, Pastor Matt and, and Pastor Michelle, who's leading this effort, um, you know, it was just, just amazing. Uh, so I was very happy to be a part of it. 
and also wanted to shout out Mr. Anderson from vet school, who's a bilingual math teacher. He had some of his students out there and they just love, you know, he's, he's, a uh, he speaks some Spanish, but he was really engaging with his, uh, with his kids. Um, and allowed me to to get to know them as well. So, you know, thank you so much for letting me have that time with them. And I also wanted to shout out uh, Miss Reese, you know, for this for this Teach Camden initiative because I've always spoken about this. Like we, you know, we do have a need. There's a national teacher shortage. It's everywhere. It's just not a Camden problem. But um, she's been since she's been on board working very hard with the rest of the staff. Uh, on addressing and recruiting, uh, you know, teachers. And I know sometimes as paraprofessionals, you're hesitant or reluctant to take that next step to become a teacher because you don't know how or you think you can't pay for it or, you know, other barriers and challenges that, that you face. So this, this is a really accelerated program. I'm really excited about it. And, uh, you know, just looking forward to, you know, giving uh, them the opportunity to serve our students on the next level. So thank you for, thank you. Thank you, Board Member Hudson. Any other board members? So I echo everything that all the board members already said. I want to um, just start off by um, saying I thank you uh, to the board members for all you do. Um, I think it was last week, we had three events in one day, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, and I don't know, another time. Um, and again, this is volunteer, so thank you, and I appreciate you for everything that you do. Also, you know, I just encourage people in general to be mindful of how we speak to people. You know, think about how you want to be spoke to when you're speaking, you know, to others, especially those that are supposed to be working for you. I know for me personally, if you hollering and screaming, I mean, I'm not going to receive it well. It's not going to make me work harder. I'm not talking to one individual. I'm talking in general. So how you want to be spoken to, you know, I encourage you to speak to people the same way. Sometimes you get better results. Um, you know, I want to say thank you to all our school staff, every department, because you work hard. A lot of times when people come up, which is important, accountability, you know, we hear a lot of complaints. Um, but, you know, when I look at where we were at and where we are today and, you know, some of the improvements and, and things that um, have gotten a lot better, um, it comes from those that's doing the work. So thank you to everybody, from security to teachers to administration, um, you know, operations, Things couldn't be done with everybody without everyone working together, as well as our students giving their input. Um, so we definitely, you know, appreciate you. And, um, you know, there's a lot being done. I mean, if you look at the highlights, there's a lot of positive things that's taking place. It doesn't mean that it's not a lot of work to still be done, but I want to remind people that we didn't get here overnight, so a lot of things won't change overnight. You know, things take time. So, you know, we do appreciate everything, you know, that, that you do. I want to say thank you to our superintendent and her team um, for being accessible. You know, a lot of times we don't come, in, come up here and talk about the things that come to us because a lot of times it comes to us confidentially. So if we come up here and say, hey, you know, uh, Ms. Gillespie, you know, brought this to me, you know, what would that do? Um, so, you know, I'll just share things that come to us, you know, marijuana usage, staff concerns, parent slash guardian concerns, bus issues safety concerns, staff increases. All these things are things that we speak about with our superintendent and her team. You know, daily, prior to the meetings, you know, these are things that are talk about, talked about on a regular basis. So, you know, when you, meet, when you hear a team that works behind the scenes, this is your board. You know, your board works behind the scenes even when you don't hear or when you don't know about it. It's not just saying it, you know, when, you know, things come to the table, it's something that we do all the time as our responsibility. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Mangalisa, I know he spoke about the cleanup, um, and I'm not sure actually in what nature, um, but I'll speak about the cleanup in reference to ECDC. So one, when parents bring issues to us or guardians, you know, things that we can address or take care of, you know, this is what we do. So what happened at ECDC, you know, a parent brought a concern of trash. So we reached out to operations who in turn, you know, um, addressed those concerns. And then the property that's right across from ECDC, um, there was trash there that's not the city's property. It's not an area that's gated up. It's not an area that's, that's cut off or, 
excuse me, separate from the school and it's trash. So if I'm wrong personally for picking up the trash or having somebody pick it up, then, you know, blame me for that. In turn, what it did was cause us to look into whether there was any toxic things or, you know, if that was an area that we shouldn't be in. Because again, if that's what, what the situation is and that's what we know, then people should be making more noise. Because that's the situation that's been for years. And it's not an area that's gated off. So if we want to be in an area where, I'm sorry, we want to have our kids look at trash and our parents look at trash, again, it's still a safety issue however you look at it. And to my knowledge, our superintendent has taken the initiative to start doing some research and look into things. And as of right now, she hasn't found, or the team hasn't found anything, which does not mean that's not the case. But we would rather know and protect our students, our staff, and our parents than not know. Let's not try to put somebody down that's doing the work. We complain about people not doing the work. What about the people that's doing the work? On that note, thank you, everybody. I apologize. Uh, board member Hudson. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I just, for the record, wanted to state that the next policy committee meeting was May 20th. That's all. Thank you. And at this time, I would like to turn it over to our superintendent. Thank you, AP Nelson. At this time, we're going to, um, I'll turn the meeting over to the board secretary to present the agenda items. I present the business office agenda items for approval, which includes the bill list and the resolutions. And does the board member have any questions on the business office agenda items? Any okay. board members have any questions? No questions. Okay. Turn it back over to the superintendent. Thank you, board secretary. In accordance with the powers vested in the state district superintendent under Title 18A, I hereby approve today's superintendent's agenda items and business office agenda items. I turn it back to the board secretary for adjournment. Call for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion. Motion by Mr. Hudson. Second. Second by Jackson. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, Aye. 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 Aye.